Good morning. Um, I'm happy to be here. My name is Stacy Borello, and I live in Fuquay Farina, North Carolina. That's in Wake County, um, outside the, the capital. Thank you, Stacy. Could you please tell me what would you like to see changed after this election cycle? Um, that's, that's a really, really great question. Um, I think that what we would like to see change is not only the administration change. Um, I think it's important to stress that that the current president, Donald Trump, he does not have the support of the majority of Americans. His approval rating is is actually quite low. Um, so I think that most, the majority of Americans would like to see the administration change, would like to see the, the challenger, Joe Biden, win this election. But I feel very strongly that that is not the, the end goal. That's not, uh, that's not the solution that we're looking for. Because in the United States, as you may know, we have one of the we have very high um, wealth inequality. We also are one of the only developed nations without universal health care. We have high poverty rates, our, our high homelessness rates, and those, those conditions are only continuing to grow. And I think uh, really that Biden will be a step in the right direction, but what we really need is for our electorate to stay engaged. I really believe that the youth movements that we're seeing happen across the nation, such as the Movement for Black Lives and the Sunrise Movement, are really where uh, my hope lies for the future, that uh, people need to keep pushing for change, keep pushing for people-centered policies and not ones that are, that are written by corporations. Uh, I see uh, the t-shirt the you are wearing, so <laughs> that's a message you want to send. Would you please uh, expand a bit on this? Yes. Um, I am a Medicare for All advocate, and what Medicare for All means to us in the United States is a universal single-payer health care program. Uh, the, the support for this program is really gaining a lot of momentum in our country. We're seeing um, that around half of even Republican voters and more than half of independent voters and about 70 percent of Democratic voters support replacing private insurance. Uh, with a universal single-payer program, which would expand coverage to everyone. We have um, very high uninsurance rates in our country, about 30 million are uninsured, but even higher amounts are underinsured, which means they can't afford to see the doctor even though they have insurance because of the co-pays and deductibles. So I think that um, really valuing each person's health would not only make a better society, it would better equip us to deal with pandemics because we wouldn't have people avoiding going to the doctor, avoiding testing, and avoiding treatment because of fear of costs. You think the pandemic and also uh, President Trump's uh, intention to destroy Obamacare are going to play a big role in this year's elections? I, I do think so. I think that health care is a number one issue for voters. And I think that uh, people are, are starting to understand the issue more, that, that the so-called Obamacare, which has been kind of a, a um, has a negative spin on it, is really is, is protecting people who have pre-existing conditions, um, allowing uh, young adults to have coverage under their parents' programs. So it actually is a beneficial law, although it although it doesn't go far enough. And, and I do I do expect uh, President I, I do expect Trump, Donald Trump to have some uh, backlash from people who are voting for health care issues. But you know there there are a lot of issues that uh, that people don't agree with President Trump on. Like um, he is he he often makes very racist comments. Um, he often incites violence. Just this past weekend, supporters of his in Texas harassed a, a Joe Biden campaign bus, uh, tried to stop it on the highway. There were like a, a hundred trucks surrounding it. It's a very aggressive uh, and, and inappropriate thing to do. And, and Donald Trump actually was cheering that on through his Twitter account. Uh, so I, I think our, our, our electorate is really ready to see a change, see more maturity in office and, and an end to this this sort of nightmare we've been living for the past four years. So, uh, Stacey, let's imagine today is November 4th and we have Joe Biden win the elections. What would be the first three things you think he should be doing to unite the country and take it into the right direction? Mm -hmm. that's, that's an excellent question. Um, I, I think that it, it will be later than November 4th that we will know. I do expect uh, Donald Trump to contest this election and, and it to drag on for a while. But hopefully once that, that mess is all sorted out and that, that Joe Biden is, is officially confirmed as the, as the incoming president. Um, one of the first things that's popping into my mind, I, as you might know, we are having uh, protests for the past six months over systemic racism and violence in policing. There are uh, solutions. Uh, that have been put forward. Um, the Breathe Act is one of them. 
And uh, a lot of this legislation has just been stopped in the Republican-controlled Senate and has not moved forward. So something like uh, the BREATHE Act to address systemic racism and violence in policing is very important and a very immediate need. Um, I think another um, immediate need is, is properly dealing with our pandemic response, making sure that we're doing the contact tracing, the mask mandates, and um, whatever other measures we need to take to make sure that as we go into this win these winter months that we have, that we're equipped um, to deal with it and really go into 21 with a very much more comprehensive response that's going to protect our, our population. And, and passing the relief bill, you know, there's also the, the HEROES Act, I think it's called, has been stuck in the Senate and we need to pass relief for our people. That's a second, important second priority. And of course, uh, universal health care, we need to make sure that our population has access to health care they need without financial room. So those are my top three priorities for the incoming administration. Thank you, Stacy. One last question, if I may. I would like to ask you to please name three negative things in uh, President Trump's uh, mandate, and also three positive ones, if you can, please. Um, I, I had mentioned earlier that, uh, that the, the current president is uh, stoking a lot of racism um, and, and, and encouraging his uh, white, supremacist, white supremacist supporters. He's also doing nothing to address. Um, he's really, he's really um, making the situation worse and, and not doing anything to address it. So that's a negative point. Um, his, his attacks on health care, trying to take away uh, people's coverage through the Affordable Care Act and their protections for pre-existing conditions is another negative. Um, and also his, his refusal to really act uh, to protect the American people on the pandemic, I think is another huge negative that's impacting a lot of people. You know, our, we have had um, so many deaths in this country and such a high, high number of infections, and it's just going up now. Um, so that's really disappointing. And I, I do think that we're going to hear the American people speak back on that tomorrow at the ballot box. Um, as, as far as positive things, you know, um, I might, uh, you know, I, I'm on one side of the spectrum, but I think that one of the most positive things I have seen is that people have been so much more engaged the past four years um, in fighting against him. And, and that's a positive in a way. We've gotten, the progressive left has gotten much more organized, um, much more loud, people feel more empowered and confident to speak out, um, to really preserve their values. And uh, so that that's one positive thing. Um, <clears throat> as far as like legislation, I, I really don't agree with most of what he's done. I, I know that he has done some small things um, with regard to some small criminal justice reforms. Um, and, you know, I, I just don't really approve of much of this policy. I think a lot of the things that he has done um, for positive attention has been for, you know, to try to get some benefit out of that with voters. Stacey, one last thing, if I may. Uh, you really think that these elections are, as Joe Biden stated it, um, a battle for the soul of America. Mm -hmm. That's um, that that's a very good question as well, and I know that that is the 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 tagline that the the Biden campaign is using, and I I think yes, I mean it, it is a nuanced it is a nuanced response. I feel like we need to make positive steps forward. I think that there are many people in the country, especially youth. Um, who don't believe that, that Biden is, is a great candidate or the candidate that, that we want or need for this moment in time, but he is the candidate that we have, and he is a, he is a step forward from Trump. And I feel like, um, like I said earlier, people need to stay engaged. If they want to see the country um, really improve and wealth inequality uh, be addressed, systemic racism be addressed, then people need to stay engaged and, and not expect uh, Joe Biden and his administration to fix this on their own.